Hi guys, it's Teresa. Welcome back to my channel. So I realized it's been a very long time since I've done any video on here except for announce my other channel. But recently I thought, you know what, I should at least talk about the books that I read over the summer because I haven't done so yet and it's driving me crazy to have this pile sitting here. If, like I need to talk about these books at some point and time is just running away from me. So I thought, you know what, I just sit down today and do a little bit of a wrap up of the books that I read since the last time I talked to you about books, which was in March, I think. That's insane. So you would expect this list to be a lot longer than it is based off of what I usually, like the pace I usually read at, but unfortunately, I barely read, so I read like 10 books or so. So without further ado, let's go through these books together. And uh, I hope I can still remember what they were about. <laughs> the first one is Anna Kay by Jenny Lee. I read this in April. This is a retelling of Anna Karenina, as the title suggests. So in this book, we follow 17-year-old Anna, who is very rich. She's Korean-American. She has the perfect life, the perfect boyfriend. She's at the top of society, basically. And then she meets Count Vronsky. He's a notorious playboy, and Anna is not. But he has never been in love until he meets Anna. And maybe she hasn't either. And then they're pulled together and stuff happens. I will say for the most part, I did enjoy reading this book. Like the process of reading, I found enjoyable. But one thing I noticed in this one in particular is that it tried to walk the very fine line between being a modern story and also a loyal retelling of the original. And there's a lot of drama in this book, like very dramatic reactions to things that aren't realistic and that seem very over the top and kind of out of place in this particular setting. And I felt like that way for most of the book, like the book was kind of confused about what it was and what it was trying to do. And then the ending happened. And again, I know being true to retellings is like a thing. It's a good thing, but I felt like that just was too abrupt and kind of unnecessary <laughs> and it didn't like the ending. And so I gave this book like 2.5 stars, I think. I don't think it's terrible, but I don't think it's particularly well done. And another thing I noticed is that there's so many like spelling errors and punctuation errors in this book that it really drove me crazy. Like I am not somebody who looks out for those specifically, but if I notice it, like if I can't help but notice it a lot in a book, that's a big no-no for me. Like you shouldn't be distracted by the terrible punctuation and spelling. Unfortunately, the next book isn't much better at all. In fact, it's actually worse because this book I didn't even finish and that is The Honey Don't List by Christina Lauren. This is a romance, of course it is, because it's by Christina Lauren. In this book, I follow this like high-flying couple, the Trips, who have like, I think an interior design business or something and they're really famous and then they both have assistants that basically do everything for them and they keep your life from falling apart because they, the trips are presenting this like outwardly very perfect marriage. But actually they're fighting a lot and cheating on each other and there's stuff going on all the time. And the assistants have to keep everything from blowing up. And then I think that they fall in love. I didn't even get to that part because I hated it. I was just not interested in anything that happens, mainly because and this is just like maybe a me thing, but I'm so over stories where the main character is being a total pushover and like somebody else is constantly stealing their ideas and they're like, no, it's fine. I'm just helping them. It's no big deal. But then somebody else is like one on one copying their ideas and like taking all the credit for it. And I can't sit here and read about that because it, that sucks. I'm, I would get too angry. So I don't know. This was just not it for me. I didn't feel like the characters were very personable or likable and I just didn't get into the story. So I DNF'd it and I tried to send this book back but they wouldn't take it. So now I have it. Wonderful. Let's switch up genres and also switch up level of quality with Mortal Heart by Robin Lefevers. This is a final book in the His Fair Assassin trilogy. I've loved both of the other books and this one was such a good ending. I gave this 4.5 stars. These books are all set in like the 1400s in a historical fantasy setting. It takes place in Brittany and it's based on actual history um, of like Brittany trying to be independent from France. 
and remain independent, but then there's the god of death and his daughters, and they play a big role in the whole story. And every single book follows a different daughter of death, and this one was so good. It was a little weird to get started. Like some of the elements, some of the romance, because it's a fantasy romance, right? Some of the romantic elements are maybe a little bit weird <laughs> just because of the premise that we start out with. But things change, they get better. And I just thought it was a really cool story. I just love everything about this series. I will probably reread it until the day I die. I think it's very well written. I love the way that history and fantasy come together and make the perfect blend. And it's just a fun, lovely story. Another fantasy trilogy I finally finished is the Day of Abad trilogy by S.A. Chakraborty. I only have the first and second book here because the third one I still have at my parents' house. But these are called The City of Brass, The Kingdom of Copper, and The Empire of Gold, I think. These books are also kind of like historical fantasy. They're set in the 18th century in Cairo and follow this like orphan girl who gets to go to Daivabad, this big jinn city, and it's very political, there's romance, and it's just a lot of fun. And my favorite of the three was definitely the second one. I, I felt like there was so much happening and it was so crazy and I was just in love with it. I think I read this book, it's kind of big, but I read it very quickly because I could not stop. Next, let's talk about A Murderous Relation by Deanna Rayborn. <sighs> the series that has just consistently gone downhill ever since the first book and it's the most sad, the saddest thing ever. This entire series is like a 19th century detective kind of romance story following Veronica Speedwell, who is a lady detective, and her partner, Stoker, and they solve crimes, and every book is a different crime. Now, the problem with this, with this series is that it's basically entirely carried by the will-they-won't-they tension between the main characters, and I love that, especially if they're fun and interesting and likable characters, and I think that, think that really works very well. Unfortunately, in this book, it was literally the only thing that kept it going the entire series it was hinging on this tension because the the mysteries had grown kind of lackluster and the rest of the like kind of mis like sub mysteries that existed were just not that interesting and not that mysterious anymore so it was just about this tension at least for me and in this book they finally got together which honestly is like way too late anyway because five books really and then it's just such a lackluster thing <laughs> that happens it's just so disappointing like all of this build up and if you're gonna do a lot of build up you better make it worth your while and this isn't it at all this was terrible it was poorly done i gave this book i think about two stars i don't even remember what the mystery was i also read the butcher's hook by janet ellis this is set in the 1760s it follows 19 year old anne who is the daughter of well-to-do parents. She's very much neglected by her parents. Her father's very strict, her mother's very absent, and so she leads kind of a miserable life. One day, though, she meets the butcher's apprentice, Fub, I think is his name. It's a terrible name. I don't know. And she instantly kind of falls in love with him and imagines their life together and kind of wants to make it happen no matter what. The description now sounds very... <laughs> light and fluffy but it's actually a very dark book and very complicated it's very interesting to me because i've read some reviews saying the book is too gruesome and it's really horrible and i get why you would have that impression but i really actually appreciated it because it just shows basically a young woman who is born at a time where she has no rights and no decision making over her own life and because she's grown up so sheltered she's also very ignorant of the world and of the consequences that her actions have and what you know meaning they carry and so she's behaving very much like a child in a lot of ways and she has this stubbornness about her and this will to just make the life that she wants happen that she really won't shy away from anything um, to make it so and I found that really interesting because even though she does do some very questionable things over the course of the book she still remains 
a likable character <laughs> and somebody you still kind of relate to. I think I gave this book about 4.5 stars or 4 stars. I definitely recommend reading it, especially if you're into dark and kind of twisted stories. I also read Sweet Bitter by Stephanie Dandler. Um, this book is set in New York and it follows a young woman called Tess who starts working as a waitress in a fancy restaurant and all the stuff that she gets up to there. Um, the first thing that you'll probably notice about the book is the writing style, which is very flowery and very poetic, or at least pseudo-poetic. It's very clearly trying to impress you, and it's very self-indulgent in that way. And at first I really enjoyed it, but as time went on, I just got really bored with it, and it kind of started getting on my nerves. And I also realized that, like, the main character isn't that special, but she sort of is presented to be and her life is presented to be so like deep and interesting when it's really not <laughs> and really not that much happens over the course of the book like plot wise basically nothing happens and so I just overall thought this was kind of disappointing I think I gave this about two stars as well like most of the books apparently um, I just thought you know I don't understand why you're trying so hard <laughs> to impress me with the writing instead of focusing on the content of what you're actually writing. Like, it seems very pseudo-smart and highbrow when it isn't. Another book I read was Queenie by Candace Carty-Williams. This is a contemporary fiction novel following a young woman called Queenie, whose life is basically just going downhill consistently. She struggles with a lot of mental health issues, with a lot of trauma from her childhood. She generally has a very difficult life. And... I found this book so difficult to interact with. Firstly, because I think it's completely wrongly marketed because it's sort of, you know, presented to you as like another version of Bridget Jones, which I'm already annoyed at that, but just because like a book follows like a woman in London who has relationship problems doesn't mean it's like Bridget Jones. Okay, <laughs> can we get that clear? Also because Bridget Jones is kind of like a fun book. Like it's not that deep. I haven't read the book, but like the, sh the movies aren't that deep. It's not, you know, as traumatic as this book is to read at some moments. I actually found it just kind of irresponsible not to at least somewhat mention the very difficult stuff that Queen deals with. The way that she lets herself be treated is truly like sad to watch. How she kind of defers to the men in her life to give her value and it's very sad to see and you know she is this way because of her mental health issues that have remained unaddressed and she finally does address them towards the end of the book but for a large portion this book isn't funny this book isn't entertaining it's just kind of sad to read and you feel really bad for her and at the same time because Queenie is so closed off from other people in her life and also from the reader it's very difficult to relate to her because I couldn't for so long I couldn't understand her motivations until it was revealed that she had mental health issues and I was like okay now this makes a lot more sense I don't want to imply that it's trying to treat mental health issues like a plot twist it's not but I still feel like that should have been much more apparent at least from the synopsis you know, this is what this book is going to be like. By the end of it, you don't really feel like you know her as a person. I give this book about three stars. I still think it's well written and I think it's important to talk about these mental health issues. I just wish that that stuff was more apparent from the get-go. That people aren't made to expect that the book is about one thing when it's about a completely different thing. Um, I don't know to what extent the author has like an influence on how her book is marketed. So... This isn't on her, maybe, but I just want to point that out, that if you're going to read Queenie, it's not a fun book. What is a fun book, though, is The Duke Who Didn't by Courtney Milan. This is a really cool take on the typical historical romance. So in this book, we follow um, Chloe, who is Chinese, and she lives in a small town in England called Wedgeford. Actually, a lot of the population in Wedgeford is Asian or partially Asian, and they have these trials that they put on every year that are a very elaborate game that everybody gets involved with. And for this year's trials, Chloe's old friend Jeremy comes back. Um, he's half Chinese, and uh, he has kind of like not shown his face in the village for a few years now, and he's broken her heart in the past, and now he's suddenly back, and he wants back in her life in some way, and she's very confused by that. And Chloe is also working on getting 
her father sauce business off the ground because he's a very special recipe that he makes a sauce with and she wants that to, to like bring that to the market and it's just it's just all around a really fun story a really well fleshed out story a really complete story and i just love all the characters so much i especially love how this book doesn't take itself too seriously because as with any romance there are tropes in here and it does fall back into like familiar patterns but it's not presuming <laughs> or pretending to be the first book to do this or for this to be like a super serious, you know, deep story. It's just a fun, enjoyable, very entertaining story that has lovable characters, that finally brings so much new diversity to the historical Roman genre. I mean, I don't know, I'm sure there's other diverse books out there as well, but most of the Duke stories at least that you do see are about white characters. It's so well done that she's incorporated so much of Chinese culture as well into the setting and made it work. I also read the afterword by her which is really really interesting and talks a lot about her family's background and culture and what happened to them and their life stories and how they influenced the story and I just think it's wonderful all around and I highly recommend this book. It's actually so much fun. And that's really it for this video. I know this got kind of long-winded because I guess I did kind of read a lot of books since March. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel for occasional booktube content or if you're interested in language learning content definitely subscribe to the Unnative Speaker where I upload videos every single week about languages, Japanese, English, German, all that good stuff and I hope to see you back at least over there very soon. Have a lovely week. Bye!